All right, well, welcome. This is our first um, garden class, and we have our presenter today, Betsy. Um, Betsy, would you like to introduce yourself and the topic you'll be going over today? Of course. My name is Betsy Phillips, and I am a hobby beekeeper. And today we'll be learning a little bit about bees and beekeeping. And let's see, how do I start the... <laughs> Oh, there we go. Beekeeping is a fascinating, fun, and rewarding endeavor that many enjoy in their backyards. Honeybees have interesting habits and complex societies. Tending them can be a peaceful and calming experience. And in the end, there's honey. In recent years, backyard beekeeping has grown in popularity. However, it requires planning, knowledge, and a modest investment of time and money to be successful and safe. Honeybees are living creatures that need attention like any other domesticated animal and are considered to be livestock by the state of California. Understanding bee biology their life cycle, nutrition, water requirements, and behaviors will help you better establish your colonies and manage your bees to thrive. The honeybee is a keystone species. She is one that provides a unique service which impacts our community more than her mere abundance would predict. Everyone relies on bees' special ability to pollinate. Without them, our world would be very harsh. Approximately 90 different crops rely on pollination from bees, including apples, cherries, almonds, avocados, oranges, and squash. Can you imagine a world without these yummy treats? The life cycle of honeybees is perennial and begins when an egg hatches. During the first stage of its development, the offspring form a digestive system, nervous system, and outer covering. Each member of a colony develops as an adult over varying duration. Queens become full-grown adults within 16 days. Drones develop in under 24 days, and female workers require 21 days during larval and pupal development. Each colony contains three adult casts, a clan queens, sperm-producing male drones, and non-reproductive female workers. Within each colony, a single queen rules her workers and drones. Future queens develop inside larger cells by constant consumption of royal jelly. While workers and drones are fed only royal jelly during the first few days of their lives. When an existing queen dies or becomes incapable of laying eggs, worker honeybees raise a new queen. In some cases, a colony will determine that it is too large for its current hive. In this situation, the old queen and a portion of the bees will leave the hive in a swarm. A new queen will stay at the existing hive with the remaining bees. As a new queen becomes a young adult, she attends a nuptial flight, mating with 15 to 20 drones. With sperm stored from the mating flight, she begins to lay eggs inside the hive. Honeybee queens are able to lay unfertilized eggs, which will become male drones, and fertilized eggs, which will become female workers or a new generation of queens. The queen examines each egg carefully before placing it into a cell. Laying an egg takes only a few seconds and a queen can place up to 3,000 eggs per day. 90% of these will become bees. The queen can survive up to five years. The drone bee can live up to eight weeks and their main purpose is to mate with the unfertilized queen and soon after discharging their sperm, they die. The majority of the hive is filled with worker bees, which are sterile females. Their job tasks include nursing and feeding larvae, making new queens when necessary, forging, capping honey, collecting water, wax production, saving pollen, fanning the hot hive, removing dead bees and debris, and guarding the hive. Worker bees live only five to six weeks in the summer. I purchased my bees from OH Bees in Calusa. 
I have two varieties of bees. The video that you just watched were my Saskatrows hybrid bee colony. These bees have excellent honey production, good wintering ability, resistance to mites, and good temperament. I also have Italian bees. These bees are gentle, excellent foragers, and produce abundant honey. It is believed that honeybees came from either Central Africa or Southeast Asia. However, now they populate every continent except Antarctica. Honeybees represent only a small fraction of the roughly 20,000 known species of bees. We are most familiar with the Western honeybee. Honeybees thrive just about everywhere, but prefer to be in meadows, orchards, and forested areas. On average, they travel two miles to their food source, but will go as far as seven. Various factors can affect honey production. A beehive produces anywhere between 30 to 60 pounds of honey, two and a half to five gallons of honey per year. However, a strong hive can produce significantly more, potentially up to 100 pounds, over eight gallons of honey per year per hive. Let's see. Unfortunately, the honey bee is having to struggle to survive. During pesticides, due to pesticides, mites, and other diseases, their numbers are declining. Honeybee colony collapse can be caused by a multitude of reasons. When bee-friendly habitat is destroyed and turned into monocrops and housing, bees are deprived of, of nutrition-rich pollen sources and are exposed to a range of potentially harmful pesticides. Another growing concern is the role of climate change with rising global temperatures and increasingly extreme weather events. While one or two factors can be devastating, the combination of these problems is concerning for everyone living on this planet. One of the most lethal things to the honeybee is the Varroa mite. They not only spread viruses, but also cause wing malformation. The Varroa mite was spread by cross-feeding bees from Asia in order to create a stronger bee. In, this, in the 1980s, Varroa mites were known to collapse hives occasionally, but now it is the leading cause of hive collapse. Although Varroa mites are a huge problem, we still need to consider other factors that are causing honeybee decline. Monocropping and its necessity for harmful fertilizers, pesticides, and insecticides are causing direct problems. Greenpeace USA says biologies, biologists have found more than 150 different chemical residues in bee pollen. As human population increases, natural bee habitats are shrinking along with their ability to forage for non-contaminated pollen and nectar. Greenpeace poses three solutions for saving the bees ban the seven most dangerous pesticides, protect pollinator health by preserving wild habitats, and restore ecological agriculture. Um, let's see. So in this frame, you can see um, part of the, part of the um, um, beehive itself. In the back, you'll see a stupor and there we go. So the bottom board here in the left hand picture is a um, bottom is called a bottom board. And you can see in front of it where the bees are going out, there's a narrow opening. This will allow the bees to go in and out, but keep predators such as mice out. Um, the next, uh, the white box is a brood box or a large hive body. And that's where the queen is laying her eggs the bees are raising their brood and the drones are living off of everybody else. Um, and then the top is a telescoping cover and under it, you, which you can't see right now, is a um, inner cover. On the right hand side, you can see my super that I'm just going to be putting on to the hive. And it's a, and it's a small super, it's six and five eighths inches tall. And in it, I'll have 10 frames of wax, which is called foundation. And you can see that I've got three of them in there right now. Oops. Ah, thank you. Okay, next, okay. So here are the different sizes of the um, frames and the foundation. And let's see. So when the bees start working on the on um, the hive, they will draw out the comb. And 
here is a picture of the drawn out poem. I don't know if you can see it very well, but um, this is um, foundation, which is a wax foundation, and it has wires through it to keep the wax somewhat sturdy and stable within the frame. This is a different type of a foundation and it's called wax right foundation. Okay. And it has, um, you can see where the bees have drawn out the comb. Or maybe this is a better picture for you. And they haven't started putting any honey in it yet or brood or anything else. Then this is the wax right foundation itself. And you can see there's no the wires. It's a lot sturdier than the old wax with um, wire in it. And when I go to um, harvest my honey, it's much easier to take the honey off of this type of foundation than it is the old wax with wire foundation. Okay, go back, thank you. And here I am, I'm ready to put on the, um, the super onto my hive. Uh, okay, that's the next photo, I guess. This is called, on the, on the left-hand side, you can see the white um, screen, and that is called a queen excluder. So the queen can't crawl through those narrow spaces, but the worker bees can. So that'll keep her from going up into the super to lay eggs and it'll allow the worker bees to go up and draw out the comb and store the honey. And that's what I will be harvesting in the fall. These are the tools that I use. On the left, you can see a bee brush and it's got gentle bristles. And I'll use that to brush the, the bees off of, off of the comb when I'm taking the frame out of the hive. In the center is a hive tool. And the bees produce propolis, which basically glues the boxes together and glues the frames inside the box. And you need something to pry out the, um, pry out the boxes and the frames. So that's a hive tool. On the right hand side, you'll see a smoker. And a smoker is used to calm the bees. It causes them to, you just pu gent gently puff it and the smoke will go down into the hive and it'll cause the bees to go down into the hive as well. So you won't see as many flying around during, um, when you're working on the, in the, in the hive itself. Um, I like to use a, um, Eric, thank you. I like to use a, um, I think we missed a frame or a movie. I, I like to use a little sugar water, a very light solution of sugar water when I'm working in the hive. I spray it, I spray it on the hive when I open it up and the bees will, um, their wings get a little bit sticky so they're not as easily able to fly around. And they also are busier eating it. So it calms them down somewhat. And I don't like to use smoke in the summertime or have fire out. So let's see. Um, as you can see, my hive is, um, well, my hive is in my front yard. Um, this is a very calm um, hive or yeah, colony. Um, the Saskatraz bees are very gentle. My daughter, my grandchildren um, can sit within a couple of feet at the front of the hive and the bees will just go around them. Sometimes they'll bump into them, but they're not aggressive bees. My neighbor is um, next door. You can see there's quite a large parking area between her house and mine. So I feel very comfortable about having my hive there and she's comfortable with coming over and checking out the bees as well. Um, hive location is important for you, your neighbors, the community and honeybees. Talk with your neighbors about honeybee colonies and hives so they understand your goals and safety precautions. Be aware of and comply with beekeeping laws in your area. Setting and following a consistent hive inspection schedule is important to recognizing changes or threats to your honeybee colonies so that you can take action to keep your colonies thriving. 
always ensure that there is adequate and accessible food, nutrition, clean water for your bees, depending on your hive location, providing food supplements or installing a water source may be necessary. And I have a small bowl, which I fill next to my hive. You can't quite see it in this photo, but it has a rock and some twigs in it so that the bees can crawl on those and go in and get water instead of, and the rock and twigs are so that they don't, they can crawl out of the water if they happen to fall in so they don't drown. In the winter time, I supplement their, um, I supplement their food with um, a sugar water. And there's various ways to um, give them that. You can put a feeder inside the hive entrance. You can use a can on top of the hive, or you can have an in-hive um, uh, feeder as well, where the bees are able to get into just the amount that they can pull out. Um, inspect for any pests or diseases attacking your hive. Take steps to mitigate if necessary including hive and support structure repairs or modifications. Sometimes um, your stand may not be sturdy, and so you want to make sure that your hive is not going to tip. You want it to be facing, I have mine facing east, and it's also got a slight downward tilt so that any moisture that accumulates in the hive will drain to the front. So pay attention to bee colony behavior and take steps to requeen if or when you see an increase in agitation or defensive levels. Plan to requeen annually to limit your colonies becoming Africanized. I don't know how many Africanized colonies we have around here. Um, since I requeen or get new colonies every year, I've never had that problem. But there are other people that can um, help you with that if answer your questions if you do. Um, let's see, consider bee colony expansion and be prepared to start new hives or make other arrangements to manage expanding colonies before they swarm. Ah, so um, continue your beekeeping education to stay current in local bee protection laws and management information. Be vigilant about fire safety, especially with that smoker. Maintain the space surrounding your hives clean and clear of plants, weeds, and grasses debris and other items that may ignite and spread a fire. And then there are some things that you can do to um, help um, our bees thrive in Lake County. Plant a bee garden, go pesticide free, plant tr trees for bees, create a bee bath, like I did with a small bowl with rock and twigs in it, build homes for native bees and support local beekeepers and organizations. Local beekeepers work hard to nurture their bees and the local community. The easiest way to show your appreciation is to buy locally made honey and beeswax products. Many beekeepers use products from their hives to create soaps, lotions, and beeswax candles. Plus local honey is not only delicious, it's made from local flora and may help with seasonal allergies. You can also give time, resources, and monetary donations to local beekeeping societies and environmental groups to help their programs grow. So here are a few um, um, resources for you. The Beekeeper Guild of Lake County has a website and they support it through Facebook. Noel, Noble Ranch is a, a local apiary and he is very knowledgeable as well as Dollar Mountain Apiary. I spoke with Janice Luke at the Lake County Department of Agriculture. And I realized how much I really didn't know about keeping bees. She's amazing. So there are other um, websites that you can look at if you're interested in the scientific portion of beekeeping. And my favorite is scientificbeekeeping.com. So here on the right-hand side, you can see my bees are all over the front of the hive. And this is from last year. It was really hot and smoky. And what they're doing, what that's called, is called bearding, like a beard. And they are fanning their little wings to keep the hive cool in the evening. So that is my presentation. And I'm ready to take any questions, if you have any. I, I do have a Let me turn her.
let's see, I can tell you that um, my packages of bees from OHBs in Orland cost $175 and it's three pounds of bees. A beehive kit, which is the bottom board, the um, brood box, the top and the inner cover cost around $100 hundred and thirty-five to $165. On Amazon, you can buy the hood, um, $40. Uh, I use Tyvek suits because they're easy and nothing can get in. And they're around $40 for a package of five. And the, all the tools cost about $32. Okay, I fixed the problem. Well, all right. So I do have a question about the queen bee. How does the bees make the new queen bee? Like, how does the queen, I'm sorry? How do the bees make the queen bee? Oh, so in the, in the hive, they'll, um, they, well, the worker bees are fertilized bees. So they have X and Y chromosomes, I guess. And they will, the workers will choose a bee, I'm not quite sure, or a, they'll, they'll choose one cell and they'll start feeding it um, royal jelly. So the royal jelly feeds this bee and causes it to be much bigger than the other worker bees or drone bees. And so, and so that's kind of how they, they grow a queen bee. Okay, thank you. I have to say I'm also amazed that it's considered livestock. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. They're so it fun to watch. It makes sense now that you had that presentation. Mm -hmm. the beginning, I was like, really? <laughs> Hi, this is Millie. I was just, I'm, I'm, well, you know, I don't know. I, that's the first time I ever watched a bee thing like this. I see it out in people's the land or whatever but you enjoy doing that huh bother messing with that many bees and oh yes they're they're fascinating to just sit and watch they they'll they'll um go out and gather pollen and then bring it back to the hive for nectar and um they'll they'll do their little dance in front of the hive um it's fun to watch them bring out debris from inside the hive like sometimes bees will die inside the hive and they'll several of them will bring them out and they'll kick them off the edge and then they'll go down and check on them and it's just kind of fun to watch so these bees make this is a already made just like a, a bee out in the wilderness would make yeah is this is uh -huh. basically the same thing yes very similar so their, their honey isn't very sweet it's delicious ah uh. Because I've um, I'm down here in Middletown, and when they uh, scooped the honey, it took the I, I don't know how they did it, but they handed out honey originally from this uh, place where the bees were without any. Uh, the honey was very very good. It wasn't very sweet though. Oh really? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm saying. Because I taste these what you guys you know do at the farmers market. And I said, they sure don't taste like a regular um, honey because uh, I tasted it natural. And that was just a uh, year ago. And the, they, uh, we, my son and I had a pretty big box, but I only took a little jar full because I knew I, I wish I would have taken more. Huh. But um, I would have taken, I did take a teaspoon of it every morning. And um uh, yeah, it was, it's a way different taste from what uh, I'm going to say that the farmers, the, you guys, I'm going to say you because you're there and you do the farming with the bees. It's a way different taste when they're just grabbing it off the tree or grabbing it underneath the eaves of our old barn. You know, it depends probably on what they are feeding off of. Like, they didn't feed, nobody fed them. They were just there for the last probably 50 years till the rancheria bought the property and went to check on that house. And that's all it was. It was just, and they handed them out. They called oh. the bee man to come and scoop it. And he did that, but they said, don't, 
mess with it any other way. Just take it off the roof. And that's what he did. And it, it wasn't very sweet. It was really edible. And now when I taste the, like out of those, those stores that are called the health stores where the honey's, it's way different tastes. Mm -hmm. hmm. like but yeah, if you could get a chance, if you could get a chance, just to taste it natural, nature made, <laughs> you would you would notice a real real big difference taste. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and that's how I that's how I seen it before. But your show was very good, very Thank you. very good. I just don't know how you bother with all those bees, and I know you have your bee suit on and stuff, but yeah. It does once in a does a bee sting you once in a while? Oh, uh, I haven't had a bee sting for a long time. You shouldn't even talk about it because you might walk out and say, "Darn that lady, she jinxed me." <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's that's quite interesting what you do there. Does okay. anybody help you? Um, sometimes my daughter will come around and and help. Um, she does that too, huh? She knows what to do, what to bother with. She does, and um, I've had people come over and I have a spare bee suit and a hood and um, I'll invite them to come in and watch and look in the oh, hive that's, with that's me. That's a good hands on hand too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that was very good. I thought that was very good what you did there. Oh, thanks. Okay. That's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> well, is that maybe the end? Any other questions for Betsy? Betsy, if people want to connect with you and ask you a question, how can we do that? Um, they can call me if they want. Um, you can give them that, my phone number. Um, it's 707 322 3525. Or um, I would really encourage people to call Noble Bees or um, let me see the other um, bee guy here in Lake County. I have his name down. No, it was on that earlier slide, but they're very helpful. Or they can um, go onto Facebook and contact the Lake County Beekeepers Association, or they can call the woman at the Lake County Department of Ag. She's very informative. Well, thank you, Betsy, for being here. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Hi, Billy. Thank you for coming. Um, and we'll see you all again real soon. Bye. Keep up right, the good bye. work, Betsy. Keep up the bye. good work.